What's the difference between management and leadership in engineering? I get this question all the time from engineering professionals, but today we're lucky to have with me Kate Harris, President, CEO, and Chair of Stanley Consultants. Kate has a lot of experience in our industry and she's worked with a lot of managers and leaders. And Kate, can you please help our listeners, help the engineers out there thinking about the difference between these two? What is the difference in your opinion of management versus leadership? That's just a great question. So I remember my first job when I left school was at 17 was a management trainee. And I remember talking to my father about this and having these arguments. And I was like, it's very clear they're different. And I'm saying, no, they're not the same. They're just interchangeable words. They're not the same. And so, you know, 40 years later, um, I still don't think they're the same. And so um, here, here's how I would define it from a gut check perspective. And I work with a lot of people. I recruit a lot of people. I interview a lot of people. I develop teams with a lot of people. And that's been my, one of my skills throughout my career. And I am looking for how people talk and how people behave. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm talking to a, a person that talks about what they can do, um, either the skills they bring or, you know, the facilitation approaches that they make or, you know, how how they create these teams, then I'm talking to a manager. I'm talking to somebody that uses their skills personally to be able to create an outcome, okay? Whether in your, in, when you're more junior and you're doing some work and your, your delivery is an output that you have to do the technical or client service and you're reliant on you, you know, you're turning from an expert into a manager when you create teams around you, okay? When we see leaders who talk about they and talk about this issue around what others are doing, then we're starting to see leaders, okay? When we're starting to to see people talk about the power of the team, how people contribute, you know, the skills that, that they bring to the party, we know that leaders are, you know, facilitating discussion, they're leading and uh, you know, and direction setting and pace setting. We know all those things are leadership skills and requirements. We know they're making marginal decisions, that, you know, in terms of really difficult trade-offs. But they're not talking about themselves. They're talking mm. about the power of the team. They're talking about the power of the company. They're talking about the power of communication and engagement and triangulation. Who do we talk to? How does this work? What are we bringing to the table? So that that, that job of that leader is, is not now reliant on their personal skill set or their chain of command or how they direct traffic or direct teams. It's around, you know, bringing together great people to achieve fantastic outcomes. So for me, very simple. It's an I to we uh, situation. Um, And I can spot, you know, having done this now for 40 years in in management, I I can spot pretty quickly who we're talking to. Because while we're saying it, we also have to be authentic. Um, And so, you know, some tricks around, you know, do we really believe that? Um, or not, or are we kind of more insular, more sort of egocentric, more self-serving? The best leaders I know are humble, are vulnerable, they're authentic. They are powerful decision makers. They're not scared to get out in front of people, but really it's not about them any longer. It's about how to engage the, the constituents that they serve. And so, you know, I to we would be the number one one thing that I would look for combined with that sort of leadership philosophy um, um, around sort of um, humility and servant leadership versus kind of egocentricity. No, that's awesome. And I think what's great about that is not only is it something that you can catch yourself on and start to notice about yourself as you're trying to, maybe you want to make that transition from a manager to a leader. But I think to Kate's point, if you're tasked with developing leaders in your organization, which Kate is doing on a daily basis, as she said, you can start to understand where that person is on the kind of manager to leadership progression, just based on the way they're talking, based on their actions. And having that ability to notice that helps you to understand the different needs of the different managers and leaders in your organization. And then you can decide on how to, you know, how to equip them better. But I think little things like that, Kate, where you can recognize that gives you a lot more power to be able to build more leaders in your organization. Well, look, there's two pieces. One is the natural progression of 
you and your skill set and what you desire for, for yourself and your career because you own that, right? And, and then there's a piece around, you know, leadership being both an art and a skill. Often I hear people say, you know, I trained to be an architect, an engineer, you know, a business person. Actually, I spend every day training to be a leader, and I take that very seriously. Um, I go back to school often. I read articles often because I'm trying to become the best leader that I can be. I'm not imitating or replicating anybody else, but I am being very thoughtful around, you know, the art and skill and, and development of, of being a leader um, in whatever organization or whatever company you're in. And so, yes, I mean, these these pieces around working hard at this, you know, even the most fantastic leaders that I meet, we're working hard at that stuff. You know, it's important. It is a lifelong process and you have to be committed to it because it, it's not an easy uh, career path and uh, you need a lot of, you know, what we would call EQ and IQ mm. in order to be able to to progress and to serve others, uh, others well through leadership. Yeah, I love that because you hear all the time in our industry, I want to get the license, I want to get the next credential, I want to be become a better expert. But you very rarely hear people say, you know, I want to become that next level leader. I got to go back to school or learn something else about leadership. And I think you need to think about leadership that way because leadership is a role, it's a responsibility, and it's a craft that you can improve. You got to, you know, you got to develop your craft as a leader. And the more you grow, the bigger leadership challenges that you're going to deal with, and which means you need to get better, right? You can't just say, hey, I'm CEO, so now I'm good to go. No, now you're probably got to get even better because now you have even bigger challenges that you have to deal with. So, I mean- I mean, look, look, I mean, I think we catch ourselves in our organization, in our industry, progressing technically, as -hmm. you said. What we've started to do is say at a certain level, it is a leadership role where they focus on something like a technical position, rather than saying it's a technical role and you're also a leader. We're, we're saying now we're, yeah, we're, like it's not what this is about anymore. Um, so if you are, you know, the chief engineer of our company, then you're in a leadership role with a focus on engineering and bringing others up through their career path. If you are the COO, you are a leader who's focused on, you know, leading and running the operations of our organization. And so we're starting to challenge ourselves a little bit around right. you know how can we be saying these things when we're progressing people into positions that are based on how good they were at the last job not on the next job and not only that but the titling and role and responsibility is also focused on the functional aspects of a leadership role and, and we're simply challenging ourselves i think that's probably wrong you know we're leaders with special responsibility so um, you know we have to catch ourselves all the time around those things. Well, Kate Harris, President, CEO, and Chair of Stanley Consultants, thanks so much for talking a little bit about management versus leadership, which is always talked about in the industry, but you brought some great clarity to it for me and I'm sure for our viewers as well. Thanks so much, Kate. You're very welcome. Thanks, Tony. Man, that was awesome. I mean, I do get that question from engineers all the time, and I really love the way that Kate explained it because... By thinking about the language that people use, their perspective, you're able to gauge whether or not someone's kind of in that management stage of their career, in that leadership phase, or somewhere in the middle. And you can kind of help them and guide them, which is very, very powerful. Please consider subscribing to our channel here. We're constantly putting out videos like this to help engineers become successful leaders in their firms and in the industry. And I'll see you next week.